Greetings, YouTube. So today we are taking a look at a custom 3D printed Wolverine in the 112 scale for your GI Joe classified and or action force. So um, quick little um, explanation and or story on how I acquired this. I got this from a guy on Instagram. He's called 3D Printing Forge. Um, I will put his information in the link or either I'll put it on screen here. Um, but basically he is an Instagram guy. He makes a lot of uh, custom 3D printed stuff and he was offering a Wolverine. And um, at the time I saw it and I knew I wanted it and I was wondering if I was gonna be able to afford it because you know, 3D printing a big thing like this is going to cost you more than just like a head or you know some accessories. Um, but talk to the guy and the price was fair, so I got one. Um, quick little story about this uh, Wolverine though. So when I first received the Wolverine, um, the, the guy 3D printing for to his credit, he had packed it spectacularly, like missiles, the, the vehicle itself, everything was packed well and, and shipped well, it had all types of padding everywhere, he had stuff in little envelopes. He took every precaution he could so that it would get here in one piece. It did not. <laughs> um, the biggest thing that was wrong was that like three or four of the missiles were broken, like just broken. The fins shattered off. Uh, one or two of them, the entire missile was just broke, broken half. Um, there was also a couple of things on the front, but those were easily fixed. But the missiles, they were, some of them were not salvaged. So contacted them and let them know what happened. You know, somehow, some way, USPS found a way to tear my stuff up. And he was gracious enough to send me out some replacements. And he also sent me some extras just for my trouble. So good looking out 3d printing forge so enough about my trials and tribulations let's take a look at this 112 scale wolverine okay so we're back here and excuse the shakiness of the camera i am going um, hands-on for this so i can get close up and actually look at this uh it's kind of big i guess so it's hard for me to just keep it in, in frame and actually be able to sit down and talk about it so i gotta go hands for her hands on here so let me move Lady J out of the way so you can have a look. So here we have, we got treads and wheels and these actually do work. Um, it's not like a, this is not an RC vehicle so it's not gonna just roll perfectly, but it does roll. There are these, this, uh, I forget what this thing is called, but it's uh, something that usually is on a tank there's a specific use for it, but I, I cannot remember what it's for. We got a shovel here. We have a hammer, sledgehammer. You got the seating area here. We'll talk about how that works here in a second. You have the turrets that does spin. Now it does not uh, move up and down, but it does traverse. And again, these missiles are all removable. It does spin all the way around. It's a pretty simple setup here. It's just one, all one piece and you can just take it out and then there's the peg and there's the hole for it. So very simple to get in and move. I'll take some more looks here at the Wolverine. Here's a front view. This is, I can't remember which one it was, but either this one, yeah, I think it was this one, was the one that was snapped off when it got here and I had to glue it back on. Again, USPS not doing me any favors. Let's so have a look at the other side. And then let's take a quick look at the back a 
little toe hitch here. So I have not done any customizing to this yet. I have not sanded anything or painted anything or put stickers on anything. I have not had a chance to really get into it and make it, you know, ready to go. But trust me, it's coming. All right, so let's take a look at a figure inside. Okay, before we put a fig in there, let me see if I can get this thing to roll for you so you can actually see that in action. And there you go. Thank goodness my Wolverine didn't make a liar out of me. It will roll. So, like I said, it's not a RC, you know, vehicle. Um, depending on what you're doing with it or how it's rolling, if the wheels and stuff aren't aligned perfectly, it'll be a little bit of a stiff, like kind of struggling to roll, but it does roll. All right, let's put a figure in there. All right, so full disclosure, um, it's, I'm sure this is pretty obvious to most of you, but this is not a factory piece that was produced by Hasbro or Mattel that you can fall, it can, you know, fall down the stairs and it'll still be together. It's delicate. It may be a tank, but it is not built like a tank per se. So you gotta be careful with these three printed items. Uh, so, you know, we here we have Lady J here and hopefully CoverGirl is similar in size to Lady J, if not smaller, so she can actually fit in this thing. The seating area is very, very uh, restricted. It's very small. Um, you're not gonna get any male figures in here. Maybe Snake Eyes, because he's one of the smaller ones. But anybody much bigger than that, you're, you got no shot. Because even with Lady J, I have to kind of contort her and twist her up to get her to sit in here flush which that's not a huge deal. It's not like I'm gonna hurt the figure or anything like that. But to get her to sit in there like she's supposed to, she has to get twisted up. You can't just get her legs flat and stick her in. I tried it earlier and it did not work. She was still, you know, couldn't sit flush. And you have the added, um, the added issue that if you have a figure that has on a lot of gear, holsters, backpacks, belts, a coat maybe, which cover girl will probably, I'm pretty sure she has a coat on. If it's not a really, you know, form fitting coat, it's gonna make her thicker. It's gonna make her harder to fit in there. So yeesh, I'm hoping that when I get my cover girl, she will actually fit. Because if she doesn't, then that's gonna be a bit of an issue as far as, you know, this being a good prop for me. But for right now, spectacular, right? Looks good moves how it's supposed to there's not a lot of bells and whistles on it and i don't need a lot of bells and whistles on it i just need it to look like a wolverine and then when i spruce it up a little bit it'll work perfect for what i have planned for so uh let me put a couple of figures by it so you can see that and then i will get y'all out of here all right so here is some you know, gi joe figures and some action force figures so you can have a look at how this thing scales i'm not a military or tank expert i don't know if this is a good size for a tank compared to people it's not really supposed to be like a super huge tank i don't think it's just a missile carrier so maybe this is okay for size i don't know um let me see how it looks compared to my 3d printed triple t okay so here we have the wolverine with triple t and let's just put it out there the triple t is a ridiculous vehicle anyway it always was it always has been it's a one person tank that's it doesn't it's completely not you know functional per se in the real world but um as far as scale goes they're about the same length and about the same width well maybe the triple t is a little wider but the triple t is way taller way more high off the ground. So again, it's hard to compare because this is a fantasy vehicle, whereas this one has some basis in real life. Hard to say if it's appropriate or not. 
All right, so here we go with a last little bird's eye view of the Wolverine compared to that Triple T tank. Like I said, the Triple T is way taller as far as up off the ground, but they're about the same length as far as how long they are. So there it is. Big shout out to 3D Printing Forge for the hookup. Um, if you're trying to get a, a hold of him, he was selling fangs for a while, but I think he um put a pause on that and is going into making something else I, I think that's what he said so we'll see what he has coming up next um the triple t is by my boy kaz uh kaz uh the toy collector my guy so kaz bros shout out to y'all um so that's about it like comment subscribe later